Okay, back at the Master Bike Show uh, down in Bentonville, Arkansas. Beautiful Saturday afternoon, little clouds moving in, farmer's market down the street. And uh, we're here with James from Black Sheep. And just like to get it started, I would say that and of all you know, the world of contemporary mountain bikes, there's, there's mountain bikes, there's unique mountain bikes, and then there's Black Sheep. Uh, Thank you. Something, I mean, I've marveled at these things, pictures, the magazines, at bike shows in the past. And so uh, without further ado, let's talk to James and find out what the heck is behind this really, really unique mountain bike brand. Take it away. Okay, well, we've got two bikes here. Uh, the one closest to me represents really what I'm interested in exploring now. It's also where I first cut my teeth, and that's to say full suspension mono pivot mountain bikes. Uh, I started a company called Boulder Bikes in the early 90s, building one of the With Rich first... Williams? Yes. Really? Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. No right. way. Right? Whole new story to tell right here. Right, right. and so there's a mono pivot, uh, shock in the top tube, two, yeah. two and a half inches of travel. And what kind of limited the design was the fact that the shock was fixed in the top tube. Yeah. So the thought was how to get away from that and how to get more travel and where to put the pivot. This was a real high pivot bike that, you know, tended not to perform super well. Uh, downhill sometimes because of brake jack and so just real quickly so in 19 like 92 93 when, when mountain bike action we would go to moab each year after the bike show in las vegas and we take the latest crop of suspension bikes to moab and you know and it was like like this is early and the boulder was like the bike that not only was aesthetically one of the most beautiful bikes we had but i mean at the time we didn't know a whole lot better brake jack you know all these different limitations that we understand now with with mountain bike suspension designs but the boulder bike was absolutely far away one of like the coolest full suspension mountain bikes at the time. I mean, I, I, did, I never knew that. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I know Rich Williams and you guys, you guys had the famous poster of the girl as, uh, in a bathing right. suit dropping out, you know, the yeah. Photoshop there. Right. And then for complete bike dorks, uh, another tidbit of history, Miles Rockwell, one of his earliest mountain bikes uh, before he became world champion uh, with Giant was on a Boulder full suspension mountain bike. So yeah. sorry to interrupt, but again, no, I'm just like all of a sudden sure was, swept but... away with, with the early Boulder bike. It was just really one of the best early, early mountain bikes in terms of, again, just the finish and the design, right? It, yeah. just, it just made sense. You yeah, know? that's where so, I started. I wow. cut my teeth and I uh, learned most of the trade actually from um, Jerry Schuler, who was back in the shop, who was doing the welding and the picturing oh, okay. and the design. And um, I really liked the concept of suspension and moving forward to this uh, we have a mono pivot to keep it light uh, but now we've got a 125 mil stroke with the trunnion shock here or 110 in the upper position so we've gotten a little more travel out of it it's a lot more neutral on the pedals because the pivot's lower it's put right on the chain line yeah. uh, and we've got a six and a half pound frame builds a 25 pound bike um, wow, nice. you know with a 130 to 160 fork and a ample travel on the back so what i'm excited about this bike for is it brings kind of the marathon bike back to my quiver. I've been riding single speed for years and I can ride a single speed for a long way, but when I've got gears and suspension, yeah, yeah. I can avoid fatigue and I can do more varied terrain. And so that's what this bike was designed for. Uh, it is all metal. The only thing carbon on it are the amazing Magura brakes, uh, but we've got a tie bar, uh, tie frame, and then just uh, aluminum rim. So it's not super fancy. Um, and wait, how can you say that? Let me, let's, well, okay, it could be fancy. fancy. That's yeah. one of the fanciest things I've seen in my whole day. Get out of here. Yeah, so it's understated, let's say, but fancy. I don't buy you on that either. Okay, <laughs> it's flashy okay. and fancy. Now we're 101. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I mean, that thing the is just, just looking at the, the, the linkage and everything you got going there. It's just a med And the architecture of that back end, especially, it's just it's mind blowing. It's, you know, the standard kind of 2.3 to 1 leverage ratio and a 60 mil stroke shock. Uh, it's a it's a fun bike to play around on. Yeah. And um, it's got ample kind of bottle mounts and bag space. So, you know, I'd like to do something like the Coca Pelle on it, uh, self-supported with just, you know, a light tent in a bag and right. some food. You know, I've done that a couple times on my fat bike and I end up with a, you know, a 60 pound rig because I load the thing down oh, so long because right, I'm right. going to be out there so long. So. The hope here is to have something that's a little more nimble, yep. uh, that transmits a little less stress to the body. So that's a current production bike? Uh, this is one of one right now. We don't have oh. any in our queue, but I'd like okay. to bring them into production. You have a sort of a projected this retail is the concept, price? Yeah. We have a retail price in terms of- Yeah, 5,200 on the frame. Okay, wow. That's, ama that's amazing. 
considering there's that much handiwork going into Well, we have a things. flex plate soft tail that's similar that gets about 90 mils of travel. So I didn't want to do anything on the lower end. Yeah. Mid travel bike made more sense to me. Yeah. And what would you say? I mean, so I mean, we started talking about a little bit about, you know, with you started with Boulder and stuff, but I mean, in terms of, you know, these bikes are far and away different and more advanced yeah. than anything Boulder ever did. But yeah. And then we're going to talk about this bike here with this incredible suspension fork. Yeah. But what, like, well, let's just go straight to the fork. Like, what's your idea behind this fork? It's far more than just, you know, you, you could put well, a regular so, telescopic fork on it, right, and call it good, but no, Right. No. I wanted something that stood up when you hit the brakes rather than squatted, right? So we've got a leading link like a Gervin or a law wheel leader from yeah. back in the day. Yeah. Uh, those were forks I rode back when I was at Boulder. And I'm like, wow, there is some merit to this. Uh, this fork was modeled after one I built in 2012 for a fat bike. It was before you could get a suspension fork for a fat bike. And what I realized is like, you know, I'd like a little suspension. And I built it up and it was over six pounds in its first iteration, uh, which is a little too heavy for the, you know, 60 yards I needed it for on the 25 mile ride I was doing. And so uh, my thought was pare it down a little bit, get a little more CNC. This eight bit version or the original eight bit version was clunkier and heavier. This 32 bit is, uh, sits right at five pounds, which right. is, you know, not light, uh, but it's certainly doable. And it's a, it's basically a two-stage system, if you will. You've got the vibration damping of the tie truss, okay. and then you've got the actual travel of the air shock and the suspension. The shock actually has two mounting points where it's set now is the 100 mil travel. Uh, just by moving the lower pivot back on the shock, you increase the leverage ratio so you can move the wheel travel up to 120 mils. And so it is uh, fairly simple, but it's also a nod to um, like the early Schwinn Phantoms of yeah, the 1940s yeah. and 50s. Uh, thus the two-stage paint with the chevrons on the seat tube. So this is built to look kind of like a classic cruiser, but it's got yeah. contemporary mountain geometry and uh, a fork with good manners and a wide range drivetrain and lightweight contemporary parts. So it's meant to be a bit of a sleeper sure. and it's also a mixer. So it's 29 up front and 275 in back. Oh, right, right, okay. Is the fork something you can, people can buy into? Yeah, yeah, uh, we've, you know, we've made enough to build a handful of this run, what's yeah. called the 32 bit, uh, but it's a $2,700 fork because it's so time consuming sure. to produce. Sure. So, you know, we don't have a lot of takers, but th that's fine. It was right, right. initially just to satisfy my own curiosity about what would this be like? Yeah. Uh, and it's a lot of fun to ride. I mean, it's funny when you're like the Lawville leader fork, you know, we were talking about that just the other night too, you know, in terms yeah. of like, just like, remember when that thing came out and first of all, the Merck Law will, oh, yeah. but you yeah, know, yeah. beyond my Merck fascination, you know, but, you know, so it was this kind of like, you know, ungodly looking complicated thing compared yes. to the regular telescopic forks. But I, I, you know, I remember I was at the, the Anaheim bike show and, you know, when Merck first brought that the early version yeah. and it was, you know, it was a classic back then, the suspension test, you know, see that parking, that parking bump, go run in that thing. <laughs> And so I ran in at the, you know, and, I, and he goes, no, go faster. You know, I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to, I'll die, you know? Yeah. And it was just, it was so interesting that that, that type of fork, would, you would hit something and you could even bottom it out, but it would keep going straight, you know? Yeah. And it just had, didn't have that level of deflection like a, a telescopic fork. I think you get more had. twist in the telescopic yeah. forks. Yeah. When you've got one shock, you're not asking one blade to do one thing and yeah, one to exactly. do another, and it makes a difference. And out on the trail, we would be climbing up, this, you know, this JPL trail, you know, and it was just like, you, just the difference was so noticeable in terms of, you know, and unfortunately the fork never really went anywhere because it was complicated. And again, it just, people, yeah, it didn't look that whole like thing the other stuff. People, you know, people, if, even if it's better, if it, people don't buy into it visually, so oh well but i just i'm just just looking at that and just with this tie strut right here it's just it's so elegantly done you know so and, it was taking something like that leading link fork and blending it with what you'd see on a schwinn in the 40s you yeah. know that would be a coil but uh, a very similar type of system where are the bikes made uh we make them in fort collins colorado oh, where fort i've collins. been building for uh i guess 25 years now yeah. as black sheep and 32 years when you consider how long ago I was working sure. at older bikes. Yeah. What is it about just, you know, the bicycle that seems to carry you away and get, keeps you all these years later still doing it? You know, it's, there are uh, many things. One is riding bikes. Like it's a place where I can really let go of the stress of life yeah. and uh, just get into the present moment when you're on a bike and you're handling it on a, a technical trail, for example, you're not thinking about anything else, but where you are and what you're doing. Yeah. So it is a great way to, bring your attention to a fine focus. Huh. Uh, and for nice. me, it's also a chance to work out the things that I dream up in my mind. Like, what would it be like to build 
you know, something that looks like a vintage fork but has an air spring and you have the capacity control rebound damping and it's relatively lightweight. So right. it's a chance to also kind of satisfy my curiosity about building. Uh, as a kid, I was always taking things apart. You know, rarely did they go back together, uh, but it was an incessant curiosity with how things are made. Right. And I think my penance in this world is now I'm taking straight pieces of tubing and I'm creating things like this. So uh, I've got to make up for all the stuff I took apart that never went back together. Right. So right, right now, currently in the Black Sheep catalog, I mean, because you, 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 you do these the, the fat tire bikes too. Right? I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. And gravel has really taken off. Oh, uh, has it really? Well, I mean, your version. Yes, exactly. Bam. I mean, when the tour was big and Lance was winning, half our bikes were road bikes. Now half our bikes are gravel bikes. We build very few road bikes, uh, but we have kind of a tie leaf fork yeah. uh, that has a little more vibration damping than a regular carbon fork. Yeah. Uh, and we do curvy tie gravel builds or straight line gravel builds. Uh, but we still do a lot of fat bikes, a lot of plus bikes, and uh, what I call husky, that kind of uh, two four to two six range oh, okay. before you get into sure. like the plus, the like super. a two eight three oh. Right, right, right. So, you know, I really am a big believer in the bag, the tire doing a lot of the suspension work, zero unsprung weight. You know, the caveat is you got to have a smooth rolling tire or you just get killed on rolling resistance. Sure. But 2648 is probably my favorite tire size. If I had to pick one bike for the rest of my life, I still oh, no think kidding. it would be a lightweight fat bike. It sounds absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And it's certainly not the fastest bike, but it's the one I find myself with the biggest smile on my face. Yeah. You know, and, and I ride year round. It used to be like, okay, it's October, November. It's going to get kind of cruddy, get on the trainer inside and really grudgingly do it so yeah. that when spring comes around you're you know you yeah, haven't backslid too much is, right and uh i get on my fat bike and i ride through the winter uh with ear to ear smile you know yeah. well there's a lot of beautiful bikes in the world but beautiful and unique is a whole other category and i honestly i think you know your bikes are far and away in that category um so kudos to you and just you know the the inventiveness in your mind to come up with things that are just like not just chucking out the same old thing like everybody else is doing you know yeah. i mean it just it just brings that that level of uniqueness to the bike world which makes the bike world that much more special you know well, thank you yeah i appreciate that and it's great to hear from somebody who's been in the industry for so long and been through it from its inception really yeah, mountain biking and suspension and everything else yeah. so uh, for the sake of it then, how do people find out more about Black Sheep Bikes? Our website is blacksheepbikes.com or you can hit me up on Instagram at, at James Black Sheep uh, or give us a call on our landline. You know, we've got a website. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That's it for you, Tony. <laughs> have you been to Bentonville before? No, I have not. Yeah. This was a great opportunity. Yeah. I, uh, usually when we come east, we go to Iowa City because we uh, facilitate a titanium bike building workshop at the university. Oh. And um, had an opportunity to go to this show and have wanted to go to Bentonville and yeah. check out the bike scene. Yeah. And I'm super happy to be here and looking forward to throwing a leg over this thing and my clunker say, yeah. over there and checking out some of these trails. Yeah, definitely don't leave without taking a, taking a lap on the trails because it's just, it's, you know, it's extensive to say the yeah. least, right? Yeah, it's great to see. It's, yeah. it's nice to see mountain biking takes such a center stage uh, with community yeah. and, you know, starting people young, you're starting to see a lot of like, uh, you know, junior cycling, high school cycling teams and such. And I didn't have that growing up, but yeah. what we do, what yeah, we can to support now it we have locally. Nike, you know, Nica, you know and yeah. just like just if knock it, it out of the yeah, park. And... A ball sport, then people didn't play it, but uh, it's nice to, to see a bigger presence for wheels. In, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, wheels and pedals, yeah. Well, thank you again for coming by. Yeah. Beautiful bikes. And, thank you uh, so much. And welcome to Bentonville. And thanks, for get, thanks again. Yeah, absolutely. Cheers. Thank you. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.